Partners in Ministry, a presentation of Josiah White's Quakerdale Foundation, dedicated to growing ministry support networks, introducing people to a cause that connects with their heart, bringing hope and encouragement to our communities as we seek together to serve as Christ served. Welcome to Partners in Ministry. I'm your host, Dan Smith, and today I'll be talking with Manny Garcia. Manny is the General Superintendent for the Iowa Yearly Meeting of Friends. Today, we're going to discuss one church. What does it mean to be one church? What things can stand in the way of that happening? And what churches and their members can do to help the Iowa Yearly Meeting become one church? Welcome, Manny, and thanks for joining me today. Good to be with you. In uh, July at the Yearly Meeting, you introduced a uh, vision statement called One Church. Uh, I'd like to take some time to talk about that a little bit today. So let's start out with what do you mean when you say one church? Yeah, so it's the idea that, um, you know, Iowa Yearly Meeting right now is comprised of 27 uh, local churches, local monthly meetings. And, you know, each of them uh, in, in our stream of Christianity, we give our churches the autonomy to make their own decisions, to engage in ministry as they see fit in their communities. Um, but there are some things that we can do better together than we can individually. None of our churches are uh, really large. None of them have, you know, just all of these excess funds and budgets. And so um, as a as a community of smaller churches, we can come together with people that we know are like minded because they belong in, in our particular stream of Christianity called Quakerism. Um, and we can do some things together that uh, I think can really have a, a strong impact, not just for the people that belong to our churches, but for the communities that we serve and for the greater kingdom of God. And so it's just the idea of kind of operating as one body, one organism, rather than trying to do 27 sporadic things. Sure. You know, the minute you use a phrase, something like one church or one whatever, uh, one of the first things that usually comes to mind is uniformity. And it's very, very clear from what I'm hearing. That is not, I repeat, that is not what you're looking for, for everybody to look and feel and do the same. Is that a correct? Absolutely. Yeah. We, as, as a matter of fact, we want the opposite of that. And one of the things I like to tell uh, our churches when I visit them is you're the expert in your area. I don't live in the places that all, most of our churches are. I live in one place and there's one of our meetings here in Oskaloosa where I live and I get to be part of that meeting kind of at a deeper level. But as I travel, you know, I tell LeGrand and Bangor and Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, uh, you're the expert in this area. You know the people, you know the needs, you know the community, and we want to release you to to serve that community the best way you can. Um, and, and it's going to look unique. But when it comes to supporting each other, encouraging each other, that's where the one church idea comes in. How can we come alongside of those other places and support them and encourage them and equip them um, to do the things that God's calling them to do in those areas. Sure. So it really sounds like this is not a program. This is really more relational, actually. Uh, it, it reminds me of the conversations my wife and I had when we started having children about how we wanted to celebrate the differences and uniqueness of each child, but yet we wanted to unite our family purpose and values around a certain set of things that we wanted to stand for. So it sounds to me like really this is much more of a family relational kind of um, movement more than it is programs and, and packages. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you really nailed it. That, you know, the idea that there are some things that will be uh, the same. And in in, we hope in most of our meetings, you know, the, the theological things that we hold to be true, the our approaches to ministry. Um, there's, you know, there's kind of a unique thing that happens in our stream of Christianity. And, and we would love to keep that kind of unity. Uh, the the thread that goes through our our meetings uh, that way, while also uh, releasing them to to look and, and be unique. Sure, and and to hold to those truths and to hold into those goals and perspectives and purposes is not because they were mandated from top down, but rather it'd be like you and I saying, "Hey, what do we want to do?" Uh, and we come to an agreement that, "Hey, you know what? If you did this and I did that, we could really do some really cool stuff together." Absolutely, yeah. Sweet. So what are some things that could stand in the way of the Iowa Yearly Meeting becoming one church? Yeah, I think, well, you know, especially coming out of a pandemic, a lot of us had to kind of circle the wagon, so to speak. And there wasn't a lot of engagement with one another. And I think some of that still lingers. Um, sometimes it seems easier to just do it myself. Um, and so there, there's kind of this uh, independent Lone Ranger kind of mentality that, you know, is, is pretty prominent in culture anyway. And I think a lot of our churches can kind of catch that. Um, 
and you know doing doing that in some ways isn't all bad um but to really to isolate yourself off and say you know we're just going to do this ourselves because we can um you you might be able to but i think it hinders the rest of the body because there are some of our meetings that are very small that have very small budgets that don't have the resources that some of our larger churches have and so not only are you uh, cutting yourself off for them, but you're also hindering the ability to support and encourage those churches. I know one of the things that seems for me that I, I battle with anytime I'm going to do something in a group setting is my natural tendency is to want to get and keep. Uh, but if a group is going to be successive or successful, uh, I need to change that to uh, to give and release. Yeah. Uh, and so what I have becomes something that's available to the group rather than something that I need to hang on to. Right. You know, and, and a lot of, one of the phrases that we hear a lot in Christianity is that we're blessed to be a blessing. And mm -hmm. while that is a cliche, I think it's also really true. And, and we have to pay attention to those times and those moments where we have an abundance. And how can we use this to bless other people? And I think when you belong to a family like Iowa Yearly Meeting, that's the first place you look. You know, I mean, if if you were to all of a sudden, you know, come on some riches, you would look to how to bless your family before you would extend that circle. And not that you would stop with your family, but that's the first place to look. How can we help our, our brother and sister churches um, be the best versions of themselves? Sure, sure. Uh, so what are some things that both churches and members can do to help promote this one church um, relationship? Yeah, I think locally it's, you know, the, the member in the pew being really engaged at their local church. Um, and, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more people, you know, uh, they like to show up on Sunday and, you know, kind of check the box that I went to church and then move on with their merry way. And I think, you know, this idea, it, it starts with the individuals that make up our congregations. And so to be engaged at your local church is the first most important and biggest step. How, how can I engage in my local faith community? How can I participate? How can I offer the gifts and blessings that God has given me um, to enhance this meeting? Because Iowa Yearly Meeting is only as strong as our churches. And so we want each of our local churches to be healthy, to be functional, to be ministering in their communities, to be released to do the things that God's called them to do. And as that happens, you know, we, we like to say that we're not a top-down uh, denomination. I, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with Quakers, you know that that's not the case. You know, right. my office doesn't get to call the shots. Um, our role is to support and encourage and equip. And so it, it kind of, if you flip it upside down, the strength comes from the people in our churches. And so that's the biggest thing you can do to, to promote this vision is to be part of what's happening locally at your church. Sure. I, I know one of the one of the most eye-opening things that happened to me way back when I was at, at Wheaton College, I was taking a course, I can't remember who the professor was, uh, but they were talking about, about giving and sharing uh, and, and working for the better of the whole. And then he stopped and he said, how many of you have actually thought about the transformation that God promises is going to happen to you as a result of giving re and releasing? Mm -hmm. So with, with that thought in mind, uh, I'm choosing to be a part of one church. I'm choosing to be a part of this vision. Uh, what kind of transformation, what kind of growth can I expect to kind of happen in my life personally that I don't come out the same, that I come out different? Yeah, well, I mean, if you look into the scriptures, it tells us really clearly in, uh, that we were created to do some things that God prepared in advance for us to do. And so I, I truly believe that a lot of that happens uh, locally as you're released into ministry. A lot of people, you know, we, we hear ministry and we all of a sudden think of a pastor or a missionary or even like a Sunday school teacher. But each of us that says yes to Jesus, um, that chooses to live as a Christian is called to ministry. And so the transformation you can expect to receive is the sense of fulfillment that you're doing what God created you to do. Um, and it's a joy. It's a peace that, you know, the, the, the scripture, it's a peace that surpasses our understanding. It doesn't make any sense that we would take on this extra thing, at least in our minds, it's extra, right? Because we have our jobs and our families to do this extra thing on top of everything I already have to do. And I find peace and joy and fulfillment from it. And so I think that that's part of it. I also think it, it, it's part of the discipleship process. It helps us become the best versions of ourselves or or the version of us that God created us to be. So in a way, what you're saying is, is that one of the, the transformations that I can expect to, to experience is that being a part of my church becomes more a way of doing life than a task. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, that's, that's really the big thing behind one church is that God created us for a community. 
Um, he did not create us to, to go and live in a cave by ourselves. You know, he said when he created humankind, he said, let us make humankind in our image. God was fully community within himself, Father, Son, Spirit. We don't have that capacity to be community by ourselves. And so being part of your congregation locally, and then by an extension, being part of this larger family of friends called Iowa Yearly Meeting, um, we're living into how we were created to, to live and, and, and survive. Sure. I, I know one of the things I really appreciate about the uh, yearly meetings is I've begun to be a part of of some of the initiatives and things that are going on, especially the yearly, yearly meeting in Quakerdale, is the um, the desire to not isolate and just do your own thing, but as a group, associate with other groups. So in this case, what kind of transformation, what kind of growth, what kind of things can happen to a church as they begin to become one church with other churches in their community that may or may not be yearly meetings? How, yeah. What kind of an impact is that going to have on on the churches themselves? Yeah. I mean, honestly, that I believe that's what the kingdom of God was meant to look like. You know, I like I like to tell other pastors in our community, we're all on the same team. Uh, we might do some things differently, but our goal ultimately is the same. At the end of the day, we want people to come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's the goal. That's that's what all of this is for. If that's not what we're doing it for, then we should stop. Um, and so when, when we find ways to partner, and, and some of our churches are doing that. We've got, you know, smaller churches in some rural parts of Iowa that do youth groups together with other churches in their community. They do children's ministries. They do vacation Bible schools and things like this. They're finding ways to be one church even outside of Iowa Yearly Meeting because at the end of the day, we're all on the same team and we're all striving for the same goal. So we've got all these individuals who who have decided to go ahead and work as one kingdom, one one church, uh, supporting each other. Churches are supporting other churches. That's got to have a huge impact on community. Uh, what does that look like? Yeah, I, I think it. I think it tells the people that live in those places where that's happening um, that they're valuable. That mm -hmm. that we desire for them to have this abundance of life that's promised to, to us through uh, our Lord Jesus, and so. You know, does it mean life's going to be easy? No, but it means that there's going to be people there to walk alongside of you, um, to hold your arms up when you're tired, to meet some needs when you're not able to do that for yourself. And so it, it really just becomes this really beautiful picture of what I believe the kingdom of God is is going to look like when we get to eternity. Sure, sure. Well, Manny, this is pretty exciting. I can't wait to uh, do another interview here in another another couple months and get, get a report on some of the things that are happening as a result of becoming. Uh, one church. So thank you very much for being my guest today. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to learn more about the Iowa Yearly Meeting or One Church, Manny's contact information is right here on the screen. It can also be found in the show notes for this episode on our website, or you can find it in the description of this YouTube video. On behalf of Manny Garcia, the Iowa Yearly Meeting and Partners in the Ministry, I want to thank you for joining me today. And until next time, let's get out there and serve as Christ serves. This has been a presentation of Partners in Ministry, a podcast of Josiah White's Quakerdale Foundation. To learn more and see the show notes for this and other episodes, visit our website. To stay informed of up and coming broadcasts, subscribe to our e-newsletter. To invest in our mission, donate today.